when you see those opportunities come in, retainer is the only best option for them. If they don't want to keep paying on a per project basis, the full rate, right? Retainer is a great option. But I think that laying that out for your client is really where a lot of people are just not very experienced or just don't have the confidence to do that. Welcome back to another episode of the iFilmmaker podcast. My name is Ariel Martinez, big Mike in the studio with us. I'm ready for today. Ready for today? Yeah, I changed my shirt. I changed my shirt too. Yeah, you got, you have, I see you're popping the collar back there. Oh no, got me. Looking good, man. I missed it. I was rushing. <laughs> How you been, man? I'm doing good. What kind of stuff have you been doing lately? Work. What was your last job? My last job. Not when. What was it? What was it? What was it? Well, that tells me it was a long time ago. <laughs> no, it just doesn't say much because I can't remember what I had for lunch yesterday. <laughs> oh, okay. No, it was for um, it was a, a a training certification course. Okay, that was the last thing I did, and it was nighttime. It was like from from seven to twelve at night. <whistles> it isn't fun. Ooh. Yeah, but we have to uh. schedules. So my last my last job was the Juneteenth. We did a concert that was put up by the city of Miami Gardens. It was interesting. It was cool. Uh, the interesting one uh, thing about that one is that. The client only wanted the final like program recording, meaning somebody was switching like we our our cameras were on screens on the big screens for the audience to see. Um, and then they had overlays, they had titles, they had, you know, sponsored, you know, ads and stuff like that. But they just wanted that program recording. They didn't mm -hmm. want raw footage like the final output. And it board. had to be highly compressed, something that was shareable, mm -hmm. you know. So it was like, all right, not a problem. And that's all they got. And um, <clears throat> as a backup, we recorded everything internal on our cameras just mm -hmm. because we could. And it was an option, you know, uh, in case we have to do any cleanup of like, damn, we missed something or whatever mm -hmm. it is. Mm -hmm. uh, but didn't end up being the case. I didn't even back anything up into my server just because that's a lot of footage. Mm -hmm. They got the program file. I recorded the output to my Atomos and mm -hmm. they got that file and they're super happy with it. Nice. But that was our... So there concert. wasn't any uh, like 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 rampage like last time you did a concert. Oh my god, no, there was no rampage there. Everybody was very respectful. It okay. was a Juneteenth concert, so it was very. Uh, I I don't want to say spiritual, it was mm. very heartfelt. Yeah, it was very heartfelt yeah. uh, concert. They had poets out there because mm. nice. Juneteenth is a very special day. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, and so for the black community, it's it's a it's a big thing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a very big thing. It should it should be. So it was it like so soulful. Very it was very soulful. There you go. That's that's what I was looking for. So it was very soulful. And it's unfortunate, though, because <laughs> it was funny because a lot of people at the beginning, it was a lot of poets and a lot of like, just, I, I guess, they put it this, they saved the best for last, right? Mm. But the, the, the first, if, you know, the first uh, presenters, apparently to the audience was boring. Mm. This was a free event that was put together by the city of Miami Gardens by that by halfway through the concert half the people are already left which sucks Ouch. because the last couple of performances were really really good like I enjoyed it I was like wow, wow this these guys have, they have a bunch of new people come in during the time? no oh, wow. no mm -hmm. and this was the first annual the first annual Juneteenth concert that the city puts together okay. so they had a lot of Congress people come a lot of like people that Important approved people. this mayor yeah. the mayor was there and all that uh, but it's unfortunate that, you know, I guess they're learning. They're still mm -hmm. learning. And uh, but yeah, it, it was unfortunate by the but there were like maybe 60, 70 people there by the last two events, mm. the last two presentations, wow. which were awesome, which are really awesome. So I'm sure they'll learn from that. But yeah. but it sounds like a cool project. Yeah. Yeah. It was a cool project, which we can get into a whole another thing on how, like, you know, we set up for that pre pre, you know, we have to run like a 300 foot. SDI cable and all that and that could get into a whole nother episode but today I want to talk about <clears throat> getting clients on retainer right Ooh, retainer. this is a very juicy subject I secure think for a lot of people income for an insecure income world <laughs> <laughs> so many times we talk about how you know the differences between freelancers and and sort of people that work nine to fives this is like a happy medium right it's ideal where mm -hmm. You have that security of knowing where your paycheck is coming from, but at the same time, you have a lot of flexibility that mm -hmm. you can miss work if you need to, et cetera, et cetera. Yes. So this is like the ideal scenario for most of us, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, but 
you know, people have different uh, perspectives in terms of like how they want to proceed with this. Mm -hmm. And some people are just like, we'll take anything, right? Even if it means that they're slaves now to the, to the company in which you're signing up with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> I think we could talk about both. Have you ever had a client on retainer? And if so, what? I'm really excited about this topic because I actually want to learn from you. But okay. I have currently have about about five grand a month in retainers right now, total. That's um, good. In two projects. Great. That's pretty good. But it's not, um, they're not long term contracts. And, okay. And one of them's short. And so I don't know what will happen after that and all sure. that kind of stuff. So that's, for me, like, that's, man, if that could be always, that'd be great. Um, uh, I, before you continue, when did these start? So the, Three grand started about three months ago. Okay, so it's fairly recent. And then the other two, about eight months ago. Okay, and that one is long so lasting. So both of them are within the year. Yeah. So you oh, haven't yeah, always been relying on no, this. Okay, no, no. cool. So, so it's so. nice to have, um, but they both have come to me. So I'm excited to hear how you yeah. have gotten that yourself. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they both came to me. Um, they don't require much time. Sure. So I like that. Um. And I'm, I'm not in for the whole grab whatever you want, whatever you can, and then sacrifice where I'm not available to do my, you know, real work, which is freelancing mm -hmm. per job. Um, but uh, I mean, it it's goes nice because it's it starts to feel more and more like a full time job. It, it starts, does. It starts to feel more like. So one of them, it, if it were to continue um, past the, the time frame that it's already set for, I, I can already start to feel the build up of the not animosity but it's like it's the burden of it the the serendipity of the like the you know what i call that uh -huh. and i mentioned this before uh -huh. routine the routine and and in this world we don't do good <laughs> <with> routines <laughs> if you have to do the same thing over and over and over again it starts to get it takes away the creative aspect of it or you know what you're doing yeah you're already, it does. not you know <clears throat> you, you you're expected and it's like there's no excitement anymore. It's like a conveyor belt. Yeah. yeah and yeah. Uh, and so I'm fine with it because it's a short term. Um, but of course, the security of the income portion of it is great. You know, it helps with the family. You know, I have, of course. A, I have, I have a, a four year old, almost four year old wife and, you know, house and all the good stuff. Right. So it's nice to have that. Um, but uh, yes, it's one of them is starting to feel like when I come in, it's like, <laughs> yeah. all right, you know, yeah. Um, yeah. But it's a blessing at the same time. A hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. How about yourself? Yeah, it's always a blessing to do that. Um, <clears throat> and so when you say they came to you, what mm -hmm. do you mean by that? I was approached asking if I could, um, if I'd be willing to take this on. Sure. So of course, some of the questions were, okay, what's it going to require? Um, I, I'm not a big money guy first. Um, sure, sure. I kind of want to know what explain, the client. Explain that. So I'm not all about okay. Then my time is that worth. It's worth this much, and this is what you get. But but I kind of want to know. What do you need as a client? Sure. How can I help fulfill that? How sure. can I help you be happy at the end of the day? And then this is what it would cost or what I'm willing to do it for or okay. my team. It's not, Sometimes I have things that come in that are not me, yeah, that yeah. are my team. And so, sure. so yeah, that, I guess like that's what I mean by like not money first. Oh, this is my time. This is what, I'm not big headed in that, yeah, in that yeah, way. Yeah. I want to know how it can help the client. So right. then I evaluate that. I may not be the guy for you. you know. So for example, <clears> if it was going to cost me a ton of time and the pay is not that great, I'm probably just not the guy for you. Let me see if I can help you find someone. That's kind of how I deal with that. And I've done that before. Um, but yeah, no, so it's, I mean, it's yeah. a blessing and, and, yeah. and I'm happy to have it right now. But if you, if you don't do it correctly and that's air quotes correctly, cause mm -hmm. it's very relative what correct is. Yeah. Um, you know, you could find yourself in a pickle, you mm -hmm. know, sign, signing with a company and sort of regretting it later. So I had, um, with the one that's shorter pays a little bit more, it w I was blessed that they actually came in saying, listen, we're going to ask of you to be flexible with us in our schedules to do this, to get this job done. But we'll also be willing to be flexible with you. Mm -hmm. So I've had a few shoot days where we were scheduled for it and I had something come in and I basically say, hey, listen, I need to take this. This is mm -hmm. fine. Yeah, no yeah. problem. And they'll work around it. We right. just got to make it up somewhere else, some other <clears throat> right. day. And um, so so that works out really good. Yeah. Um, but that's how I've kind of been approached for those things yeah. and it's been a blessing that i've been approached um i would love to have a few more things that are within my time frame sure sure just for that security blanket my wife really likes security <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so you know most i'm, most, I'm, I'm sure they do most yeah. ladies do yeah, you know yeah. and um and and it's nice to be able to have that you know like i had mentioned in a previous podcast you know my dad looks at what i what i do and he's like you're crazy to not <laughs> yeah, know yeah. what you're going to be doing next yeah. month and what you're going to be earning um, but it's nice to have a little bit of cushion in this sure. very unpredictable world. 
Yeah. No, that's that's definitely true for all of us, really, to, to have that. If I could get all my clients on retainer, it's easy, mm -hmm. you know, but just like anything, we, they don't know when they're going to need what they need or, you know, the importance that they put in video. Right. So for one of my uh, bigger clients, um, they put a lot of emphasis in doing video content for them. It made sense to put me on retainer. Right. And the way I, I evaluate that is how often are we doing work? Mm -hmm. Right. So how often are we doing work? What do you need? How often do you need this? And sometimes I would probably get paid less, but you have the security of a contract. Right. Mm -hmm. That that they have to pay you regardless. And it's still helpful to me. So one way that I evaluate it now, not before it of, you know, how much to get paid and whatnot is the man hours, right? And again, I, I get out of the mindset of, I have to do this myself. So I, I do a lot of outsourcing, but I cannot outsource more than what they're paying me. You know, and at the same time, I have to still make a little bit of profit. Mm -hmm. um, but it always makes sense. And I think business-wise for any company to know that if you're gonna need this much work, then it's better to do it on a month to month basis. Sometimes they don't even consider that. So it's up to you to remind them. Open that up. So when you see that opportunity comes where they're asking a lot of you, mm -hmm. just approach them and, hey, have you ever thought about, you know, just putting me on retainer? And the first thing I always say is, it'll save you a lot of money, you know, cause you're paying me now 2,500 bucks every time I have to do a video this one video for you is maybe a 20 30 second video mm -hmm. but you're paying me money to do this why not just pay me on a month to month mm -hmm. and you, the, the cool thing about this is that you can make it so creative right you could be very creative with how you structure it so let's say 2500 bucks now per video where we're doing like three or four or five of them uh, every month why don't you just put me on a retainer put whatever six thousand bucks it will save them a lot of money. it will save them a lot of money mm -hmm. Now, let's say that one of their first concerns that I think that they might be thinking is, well, what if there's a month that we only do three? Mm -hmm. That's not, well, no, let, so let's structure it in a way where it now rolls over, right? So now instead of it costing you 25, it's costing you what, 1500 bucks per video, but that can roll over. That's okay. You so know, what you, do you mean by roll over? If you do three a month and the next month you do 10 or whatever, at the end of the year, you have a certain amount and say one of the stipulations in the contract is that you have to use it by the end of the year. Right. Because it's not going to roll over by year, but it will roll over by month. You get what I'm saying? So you can get so creative mm -hmm. with how you structure it, depending on your client's needs. So, uh, again, put a dollar sign to the final product if you need to or if it's just by production because they have in-house editors, mm -hmm. whatever it is, mm -hmm. you could put a dollar sign to it and you could sort of get creative with how you structure it. This is where you could get like you can have fun with it, too. You know, there's so many options that you can do if what you need is somebody to come in and handle a live stream for you because you want to get together and do a podcast for your company. Mm -hmm. So I'll come out there. The shoot should take no longer than four hours. If you decide one month or one week or two weeks that you don't want to do an episode, whatever, you still have that. If you want to do something else or just let it roll over, if you want to do two in another month, but make sure all that stuff is stated in the contract and the stipulations and all that stuff. Uh, but it won't roll over at the end of the year. You have to use it by the end of the year. You get what I'm saying? Like, so you have to sort of structure this thing where now you're giving them options, giving them ideas. They could, listen, saving money. Remember what we talked about in our last episode, profit maximization is the goal of every business. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure that they're seeing the value in what you're offering them. When you can provide that for them, then they're more likely to sort of get on board with that, right? So, and then if it doesn't make sense, it doesn't make sense. If they're, you know, I think I was offering a, but it was a buddy of mine, um, and, but he has a, a nonprofit organization. And I think, um, <clears throat> what they needed was not really productions. What they needed was content video, mm -hmm. even if it's like stock photos and words put on top of it and make it all into like a slideshow with text and whatever. They just needed constant stuff. Uh, so we were trying to work something out where, you know, it's going to be your con like we get the you, you license the stock photos, you license the music, you license everything. Um, all you're paying for is the man hours that it just takes to, to just create this little thing. That's probably going to take us maybe an hour mm -hmm. to do every time we have to do it. Um, and you know, we're trying to put together some, uh, <clears throat> a, a pricing quote, something that makes sense. Cause when you're running a business, it's not only my work. So now, uh, I, ha I have a full-time editor, uh, but also I have a, a remote editor as well. 
between the two of them, I just put a dollar sign in the man hours. So if I know that, uh, just an example, I'm paying them, let's say 25 bucks an hour. I have to charge my client maybe 50 bucks an hour, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So I have to make that make sense. So that you make some sort of profit out of it. Yeah, so anyway, business. so that, that that's a whole nother episode. But you know, you you just want to make sure that you're not devaluing yourself. That's how you devalue yourself, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But now it's different in business. It's not about yourself. It costs a lot more if I have to do it myself, right? That's sort of like the, you go through those stages. But that's sort of how I present it to my client. And the more you do it, the more uh, creative you get with it. The more ideas you get out of it, you know. And but every client is different in what they need and what they value. And it saves them money too, in the sense of what's the alternative? Hire a full time employee, right? So benefits, right. all these so, different things. Yeah. So that's another thing that you have to you can point out to them, you know. Mm -hmm. So again, in the whole sales pitch, mm -hmm. <clears throat> you point that out to them, like we did in the last episode. Listen, you're gonna hire a full. You can you can hire somebody internal and do all this stuff, right? But in order to hire somebody, and this is where the confidence factor comes in, to give you the quality of work that I've been giving you, it's going to cost you a pretty penny. Mm -hmm. You know, to like you try to hire me full time. I, I would love it, right? If you could, yeah. if you could pay me what I would like to get paid, to out, <laughs> what you would like hey, to get paid. Let's yeah. do it. Listen, everything has a has a value, right? Yeah, yeah. If if you want to pay me to throw everything I've built away, and, and get me full time in your office, hey, let's do it. You know. <laughs> You might end up being miserable, but, but at least. I might end up being hey, hey, my wife will just be just outsource happy. it, just outsource it, <laughs> just outsource it. You can outsource it. Uh, but anyways, uh, but again, there's not that many companies that are probably going to hire us, you know, for what we would need yeah. to get paid. Yeah, yeah. So, anyways, um, when you see those opportunities come in, retainer is the only best option for them. If they don't want to keep paying on a per project basis, the full rate, right? Retainer is a great option. But I think that. Laying that out for your client is really where a lot of people are just not very experienced or just don't have the confidence to do that, right? Mm -hmm. So I, it's not something that I would normally initially think of when I was first starting, you know, but oh, you could easily spot that today, right? Where mm -hmm. you're getting hired a lot and a lot by a company where people would normally just continue to go with the flow and continue mm -hmm. to go with the flow. Mm -hmm. But at some point, I would encourage people, may, man, maybe bring it up to them saying, mm -hmm. hey, um, because you don't know when that's going to stop. That can stop whenever. And not, not don't go uh, don't go too aggressive. Don't go in there too aggressive and saying, hey, why don't you just put me on retainer? Mm -hmm. Right. You mm -hmm. say, start asking the questions. Hey, do you plan on making a lot of these videos? You know, yeah. do you see yourself growing and making maybe more later? Like start showing the benefits. Right. On start, start feeling them out to see what direction they're heading in. And see, and and then bring it up to them as an idea. Like, have you considered like, why don't you just at that point? Then you can ask them like, you know, you could save a lot of money just putting me on retainer. Mm -hmm. It's not going to cost you as much as all these videos, uh, by, on a per unit basis. Now, have you ever gotten to the point where it's not actually you doing oh, yeah. the actual work? Where it's yeah. Your so I just your team. Yeah. So I just so I just signed here. So here's the next thing I was going to share with you. I just signed a another retainer. Um, and I haven't done anything, but I was very open with my client. Like things are going very well on the freelance side of things where we're just insanely busy. Right. And you would think I can't take on a retainer right now, mm -hmm. but you have to start thinking as a business person and not think as an individual yes, freelancer. Yes. This is where the growth. That, yeah. That, that, that cap, you have to break that ceiling. And that's where I'm like, I, there's no way that I can do it. It's not possible. Mm -hmm. But one of the benefits of starting your business is that you have to learn to grow you can scale right mm -hmm. which it's it seems very far-fetched and a few years ago I'll, I'll admit i never thought about it like that you know i'm not a freelancer anymore i'm a production company now mm. i'm a production agency and i have to learn how to grow mm -hmm. so what this what and so i took this retainer on an experimental basis right and i was so open with my client on this because That's i've been great. working with this client for years uh, I've been working for many years and they've never offered me this sort of position before, but I've known other people that have taken that position. Um, you know, they say they're demanding and whatnot, like, all right, whatever it is, they're a typical client. I get it. Uh, they still wanted to work with me. I said, great, not a problem. What do you need? We, well, we need mostly editing, just most of everything that we need is editing, but it'll come a time where they're going to need a couple of productions, right? I'm like, okay, I'm willing to, you know, throw that in there for you. <clears throat> Here was the deal. There was this person that I was already considering to hire full time 
in my studio and I found this as an opportunity to hire them, right? So their retainer was 4,000 a month, right? And I'm like, great, no, that's not a problem, 4,000. I'm not doing this work myself though. So I leveraged that 4,000 and turned it into 3,000 and offered that to my editor, right? Mm -hmm. To the other editor. And I told him, hey, hey but this, here's the deal. I want you to do, and this is somebody that I've been working with for a long time. Um, they've been they've done work for me all the time, but I'm paying them a lot of money every time on a per project basis. Mm -hmm. But you can't hire somebody full time, especially somebody that good, mm. unless you know you know that work is coming in. So I made a deal with him is that he could work remote. He doesn't have to work out of the studio, but I need you to do all my editing work. You know, like anything I throw at him. And he, it, you know, his situation also was that he has a full time job but he's trying to step into the freelance world. So it kind of worked nice. out as well. Yep. Uh, so I said, look, I got, I got this work for you then. Do all, you're gonna handle, he's, he's essentially my liaison for that client. And I told my client this too. I was gonna say, so they're cool with that. They're fully cool with great, that. Great, great. And I right told him, look, I'm, I'm gonna bring this guy on board. I didn't tell him that I'm leveraging the money, right? So oh, well, I told business, him, look, yeah. my guy's gonna handle all your stuff, mm -hmm. right? And whatever and they keep me in copied in every single email every single text everything i'm in it i'm not talking too much at all it's only them going back and oh. forth my client's talking to my editor mm -hmm. editor's talking to the client and they're handling he's and he's good he's the reason why i liked him is because every time he edit for me and did all my jobs i barely gave him any notes like anything so i'm Priceless. like man do just do it do it all for me right unicorn editor yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's really, really good. That's one thing, the language that I've I've been changing over the last few years with my clients is yeah. my team. Yeah, my yeah, yeah. team and my team. And they've they've gotten out of the fact that I'm I'm a freelancer and they go, Oh, okay. It will yeah. we'll be dealing with him and yeah. his team. That helps. Yeah. And the way I made it even more attractive to my client, and here's sort of again, you get creative with how you lay this out, right? And this helped also. I spoke to several pastors of mine that are also mentors that are also business owners too so they give me spiritual advice they give me and they give me logical advice as business business advice uh they said you know make sure that that editor is logging all his hours mm -hmm. everything mm -hmm. because my plan is this and my client doesn't know this i told my client i only want to do this for six months i don't want to go past that because here's the okay. thing i don't want to get myself like i mentioned in a, in a predicament where now I'm, we're biting off more than we can chew mm -hmm. and they're getting all this work done and we're not getting properly compensated for it right mm -hmm. so even though he's on a retainer he's on salary he's going to see the value of that pretty soon where if we dry him out he's not going to want to work with me again or that client again or i'm not going to work whatever it is mm -hmm. so i don't want to overwhelm him and i'm constantly making sure that he's not being overwhelmed to reevaluate after six months we i told my client we will reevaluate mm. after six months i only want this to be six month Smart. period um so that i can see how this is going to go mm -hmm. again experimental for me so i'm not doing any other work I'm and just, it goes both both ways because it's great for them as well because yeah. they can reevaluate on their end and they, they loved it they agreed on it no mm. problem not a problem my plan though is like i'm having him log all his hours everything they ask him to do oh and by the way that's not only them that's my work too so when he's not busy with them he could do my work as well so i'm getting more because otherwise it doesn't make sense for me to just profit a thousand bucks just for you know uh i should be making more than that because when he can't do something i'm gonna have to step in and sort of do something myself just to sort of pick up the slack but it shouldn't be so overwhelming that he can't do it essentially what my plan is to to log your hours at the end of the six months i want to know at how many hours how many dollars an hour are we getting for the work that they're demanding because i'm going to tell them we're gonna we might have to bump this up later you know but i didn't you know obviously we'll see how the six months goes mm -hmm. i want to be able to justify what am i what i'm going to ask for afterwards so that mm -hmm. they can see it so my plan is to go to them at the end of the six months and say listen we've been doing all this work for this much dollars an hour to make this even remotely sustainable for us, we're gonna have to bump this up to this much an hour, which is gonna result in six, $7,000 a month, mm -hmm. according to the work that you're giving us, right? Mm -hmm. And that's only to maintain what you're asking of us. Mm -hmm. You're not allowed to continue to overwhelm, you know, to give us much more work because that changes the whole algorithm, right? Mm -hmm. So it's great because it's, it's all based off of current history. Exactly. It's all based on what you're mm -hmm. asking, which I don't I I don't expect them to need to have to bump anything up, but if they feel that they need to ask for more work, that's a different story. Mm -hmm. That's not gonna fly. But you know, to maintain this rhythm, we're gonna have to be getting paid this much a month. I like know? the six month uh, contract idea. 
Exactly. Now, when you you had mentioned earlier contract, so when it comes to actual signing paperwork, mm-hmm. where do you where do you go for legal documents? So, I honestly I, I I sort of write it myself, and my 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 senior pastor at my church is actually a lawyer, so I just have him review it. But it honestly I don't make anything like crazy. Uh, you know, it's usually two pages at most. It should be black and white type of deal. Mm-hmm. You know, there's different sections, and you write off. You write a, a bunch of um, a, a short paragraph of what this means and what we're going to deliver mm-hmm. for them. So, for example, if uh, <clears throat> we're going to be providing post-production work, right? Right now, we don't have a limit as to how much they can ask from us, right? Because, again, we don't know. Mm-hmm. But my plan is, you know, after the six months, we'll provide a certain amount of hours of post- post-production work. Maybe every other hour after that on a per month basis, we'll, we'll leave it at, you know, 30 bucks an hour, whatever it is. Uh, after the, the whatever it is, 100 hour mark on mm-hmm. any month, mm-hmm. any hour after that is 30 bucks an hour. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like you can get yeah, yeah. creative. Mm-hmm. You can get creative with what you, but make it clear cut, make it black and white. There's no reason for this the contract to be 10 pages long, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, at least, you know, not for me, for what I'm doing is very clear cut. Yeah. Everything's included, uh, from shoot, not shooting from, um, from, you know, syncing audio to finding music to color, correcting color grade, all that stuff is mm-hmm. included in post-production. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I, I just make it very simple and you know what, for the most part, I've never had any issues, you know, and nice. you know, we'll, if they need one, uh, extra thing that's outside of our contracts like hey can you yeah it's not a big deal it's not a big deal like at the end of the day they're a client this is just to protect you in case things just go radically sideways Mm -hmm. you know but you know that's my experimental phase that's sort of uh sort of how i'm handling that but you know and you know it's like i said getting clients on retainer it's it's tricky but it's fun you know like get creative with it uh know your value and have confidence in what you're offering your clients. There's a reason why they have, if, if they're considering putting you on retainer or if you're considering asking them to put you on retainer, it's because you've been doing a lot of work for them. Mm -hmm. Right. And if you take my advice and do it after you've done a lot of work and seeing what they're, you know, uh, then again, you've done a lot of work for them. Mm -hmm. So take that approach and, you know, bringing that up to them, you know, I've had clients ask me for, you know, send me a proposal, send the proposal, you know, see, like I'm willing to do all these videos that you've been asking me to do and throw in some stuff in there that just kind of sweetens up the deal, you know, things like, so what I do is, uh, I already pay for licenses, music licensing and stock footage licensing. Uh I already pay for that. So throw that in there free, you know, free music licenses, which is a big deal. It is a big deal. Um, one of, one of the ones I did was, uh, I offered them free headshots. Oh, their, there you go. Oh, that's another thing. Yeah. Throw in, if you do photography, whatever, I'll go in and do headshots for your whole company. Mm-hmm. Take pictures whenever you need, like things like that. Sweeten yeah. up the deal. It doesn't cost you much. It uh, doesn't cost you any of anything, but the more line items you can inv- include in that But I whole love the proposal, idea of the music because you're going to, I mean, if you're serious, you're going to pay for that anyway. You're going to be paying for that anyway. <laughs> so yeah, you, you have a subscription with it. You know, mm-hmm. you, you're paying for the subscription. You're paying for the, the stock photos, the, the stock uh, music. I have two that I use and um, yeah, it's a uh, three actually. And it's, it's all included. So throw things in there to sweeten up that deal, show them that they're getting a big value for their money and show them how they're going to save money. Every company, again, profit maximization, they want to save as much money as possible. So anything like that always sounds intriguing to them. But if you don't sell them on that, you know, you have to be able to sort of show them the value. They don't care about how good your work is. They care about the value and how much it makes them. The bottom line. That's the bottom line at the end of the day. So they see the value in video in general. So you want to show them the value on how to obtain that video that they've been getting at a cheaper price, Mm -hmm. right? So there's value. And at the end of the day, you get security Mm -hmm. for your wife. (laughs) (laughs) And for my dad to be proud. And for your dad to be (laughs) proud. So you get the best of both worlds, security and... Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. and uh free i love the thought of leveraging though as well that's great yeah leverage leverage that stuff like don't you know get out of the mindset of i gotta do this i gotta do this everything this money's for me is key no it's okay use money to build your and scale your business mm-hmm. yeah. i have a, um, a really wealthy friend of mine 
um, very wealthy. And nice. one of the tips he gave me was uh, try to be able to sell something that's small priced but is multiplied and you'll be rich. And I was like, wow. And he had found a way to do that in, in his business. And it was something that was, you know. What does he do? He um, has a uh, rim shop, so wheels. He sells mm -hmm. wheels. And he found a way to do something that I was like, oh, that's pretty creative. Are you sure you want to get into the headache of that? And he goes, when this many people are paying this much, yeah, it's worth it. I was yeah. like, Phew. and it took yeah. him to another level of income. Thought that was really cool. Say, say that part again with this many people. Because <laughs> no, no, people are so only hearing our, hearing us, not seeing us. Oh. You said this many people are paying this much. I forget. I see cameras everywhere. Yeah. So, you know, when, when uh, a lot of people are paying a small price, at the end of the day, that to you who's receiving that for the, the trade of service is a large number. Yeah. So if you get 5,000 people monthly paying $10, no. hello, you know? Yeah. And so that's what he, he was able to find that opportunity in his shop was to do something that does that. And I was like, man, that's great. And he was telling me, man, that's the secret to, to success is just find a way to sell something that you can multiply in, in affordable numbers Sure. that, um, you know, obviously doesn't cost you too much time and stuff like that. But, um, I thought that was great. And, uh, that reminds me of this leverage. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it just gets tricky when it's creative work, right? Mm -hmm. When you have to keep a certain standard of quality mm -hmm. and, um, all that goes into that. So you have to find people that you can, but if um, you can build a team, like you're saying, imagine yeah. you had 10 of those kind of clients and 10 trustworthy yeah. editors well, that again, yeah so again projects. it's uh, uh, this is an experimental phase mm -hmm. but you know my idea is to grow in that same manner so i mm -hmm. want to be able to offer this to other clients and whatnot so um you know we can we can sort of continue to scale that way but uh it's great yeah and i don't have everything figured out i'm just learning all this stuff so this is sort of how i'm seeing the the dice roll and that's sort of what i'm going through but again i'm you know, I'm going through it this with, uh, you know, mentors and getting advice from people that have been there before. Mm -hmm. So that's sort of how I'm sort of approaching this whole thing. It's great. Good episode. I Any got, I, I got some stuff out of it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So thank you guys for watching this episode. I think we got to wrap this one up. Uh, again, you can find all of our contact down below in the descriptions. Big Mike here with us. Yeah. You can reach us all on Instagram or Facebook. We'll be there. Let us know what you think about this episode. Uh, I believe over at ifilmmakerpodcast.com, there's a little microphone link that you can click on and send us a recorded message. Let us know what you think of the show. You could also write us on Instagram and Facebook. Until next time, we'll see you on the next episode of the iFilmmaker Podcast. Hey.